People say, hey, Alexander Quinn, the photon belt and the Alcyon rings, they don't exist. I only deal with fact and science and 3D stuff like that. And I say, well, no problem. Let's give you the facts. Let's give you the 3D stuff. Let's give you the science behind it. And then we'll play with the fun esoteric information because right now, this is potentially one of the biggest factors in what is causing ascension right now and many other things, including what is affecting the Schumann resonance and why it's going up and down and why it's affecting our DNA. So we're going to look at the who, the what, how it's going to affect us and the future, including the history. Let's dive in. Now, currently, ascension symptoms are at an all-time high. Our bodies are transmuting a lot of energies right now. So for those of you, if you think you're going through ascension energies and your body's going through some strange things, go to the drop-down description underneath this video, and there's a whole list of symptoms that you might be going through if you think you're experiencing this and getting DNA upgrades and all that kind of stuff and going through the photonic belt. Now, before we move on to the next part, let's have a quick look at the history of this thing, and we're going to look at some science and some facts. By means of satellite instrumentation, astronomers in 1961 discovered what appeared to be an unusual nebula. We normally understand the nebula photon as a vast cloud-like mass of gas or dust. However, this one appeared to have anomalous properties and was named the Golden Nebula. So governments found out about this around 1961. Some say it was uh, actually before that. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why didn't they tell the general public? We know that um, um, there's this massive gold nebula out there. And when they found out the trajectory of Earth was headed straight towards this um, band of photonic energy, they, they decided, hmm, maybe we won't tell anyone because this could actually awaken the whole planet. It could affect our planet. It might even change our DNA. That's quite interesting, isn't it? So the US government do what they often do. They will slice a little bit of information in with something else. And then you had, we basically had to wait another 20 years for the American government to come out. And then they made a radio broadcast in 1981 to say, hey, we're going to be moving into this cloud, this electromagnetic cloud. You know, it might be quite interesting. Oh, yeah. And also in other news, it's been announced that the, the FDIC, the Bank Depositors Insurance, is pelling us. So, I mean, you know, they always slice in major news which with other major news to see, you know, how this will affect people. Will others, is there going to be mass hysteria? And if they don't do that, then they do that in movies. You see, they'll put little bits of information in movies to delight it, dilute it down and see how people will react. So let's do a quick recap. So what we've got is the Pleiades star system. Many of you have heard of beings called the Pleiadians. And when you look up at the night sky, some people call it the Seven Sisters, because when you look up, there are actually eight stars, but seven are the most visible, and they are the suns which are in this system in the Pleiadians, which are going around a central sun, which is Alcyon, the main grand, grand central sun of the Pleiadians. And what you've got is these different stars branching out. And then we have Earth, which is going around our sun, but our solar system is going round and around the great central sun, which is Alcyon. So we're going orbiting a massive sun from the Pleiades. Now, this cycle takes roughly between 24,000 to 26,000 years. So approximately, some people say 11,000, but approximately 12,000 years, we go through this photonic belt, which is stuck right in the middle. Well, let's carry on with a little bit more history because there's various astrologers and scientists and engineers who started seeing this. Frederick Wilhelm Bessel, born in 1784, was a German astronomer, mathematician, physicist, and geodesist. He discovered that the stars in the Pleiades had a proper motion of 5.5 seconds of arc per century. And then Jose Comas Sola, a Spanish astronomer of Catalan origin, born 1868, further postulated that the Pleiades and a number of other stars formed a distinct system that all apparently had their own planetary systems upon which our solar system played a part in. Then Paul Otto Hesse was a German esoterrorist and an engineer. He also studied this system and discovered at absolute right angles to the movement of the stars, a photon belt or monastic ring with a thickness of approximately 2,000 light years existed. Up to this time, scientists have been unable to recreate this phenomenon in a laboratory, but Paul Otto Hesse described his beliefs about this belt and its impact in his 1949 book. 
the recent day. But here's the next really interesting part. So the very, very first time we heard about the three days of darkness was from Nostradamus. But when some of these scientists started looking at the photonic belt, they thought, well, when Earth is coming here like this and it starts to, to touch into it, how is that going to affect our electromagnetosphere and the, the ionosphere, which is me measured by the Schumann resonance? Are we going to have some kind of three days of darkness? And that is where the three days of darkness really started coming from, which people are still talking about even now. Let's have a look. The concept was further progressed in 1977 when Samuel Anwoa, his lecture, The Rings of Alcyon at the Conference of Alcyon, in which he mentions Hesse, who predicts that if the Earth enters the belt first, a great fire in the skies or pyrotechnic lights would appear. But if the sun enters first, the radiation could release what could interfere with the solar rays and darkness might reign for 110 hours, after which everything would return to normal. So quite interesting about the Mayan calendar, the long count, calendars that also coincides with the 14 to 16,000 cycle which it takes to hit this photonic belt every time we go around. So the Mayans knew about this and that's why they predicted that in 2012 when we went into the photonic belt that there would be the end of a world. Well there is an end of a world and now we're going into the new world. So the Mayans knew about it but even more interestingly all these ancients predicted it. So we had the Native Americans, the Red Indians, they were talking about it as well. And if you look in some of their scriptures they were saying when the earth passed through this wave great changes would occur. This great transformation would be preceded by a time of purification. Now, when you hear these channel messages like there's more light on Earth than there's ever been and Gaia is full of light, that is an actual scientific fact because there is more plasmic and gamma ray and photonic energy ever been on Earth than ever before and cosmic radiation. So it's not just new age stuff. It is actual scientific fact. There is more photons here than ever before as we are going through this 2000 um, year uh, plasmic um, ring which goes around the sun of Alcyon. So it takes 2,000 years to go all the way through. Now, a little bit later on in the video, I will get into the more um, esoteric and metaphysical parts, but let's stay on the science for a little bit. And I will explain later on why there's actually been a matrix, why the light hasn't been able to get in. And that's why some people talk about that the Earth being a prison planet and souls not being able to escape. But we'll keep that good stuff for later on. Let's stay on the science bit. And here's a quote from a doctor who explains the belt the photon belt is an immense region of space which is radiating intense electromagnetic radiation throughout the visible spectrum and beyond into high frequency invisible light, even including some X-ray spectra. It is part of a magnetic flow of light throughout the galaxy. So to the sensitives out there, you've been noticing that the ascension symptoms have been slowly climbing and climbing and climbing. The energies have been getting greater. Why is that? Well, if you look at this photonic belt, you've got a 2000 light year stretch of photonic very intense energy now imagine this is the belt here with Alcyon in the middle the great central Sun as you come in as Earth comes in like this you are hitting the photonic belt and it's going to take 2,000 years to go through but the photonic belt is oscillating it's electromagnetic frequency and gamma plasmic energy and all kinds of things and it's oscillating like this so it's going wow 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 like that so some people say in 1987 it, it that's what triggered the the um, harmonic convergence on the 16th of August when our mag magnetic started changing and that also if you look at the poles they are massively changing at the moment and it was uh, the North Pole a magnetic North Pole was in Canada and it's skirting over to Siberia at the moment so that's part of what's going on going into this photon belt but the intensity of the photon belt is right in the middle when we get to about a thousand years however for us it feels like it's getting stronger and stronger and if you look at the list of um, ascension symptoms below you might be feeling them so ascension Ascension cannot be stopped anymore. That's why the Galactics and the ETs and the Angels, they keep saying the light has won. Because if we didn't um, blow ourselves up or create a catastrophe on our own planet in the year 2000, then we wouldn't have gone through, we would have still gone through the photon belt, but we wouldn't have been here. So the fact that we're still here and the Armageddon prophecies didn't happen and we're now going into the belt means the light has won. And that's why they keep saying the light has won, the light has won, because it's now a definite thing that is now going to happen. Now, some people might 
might say, does a photon belt really exist? Can a photon belt exist? Is this just more new age nonsense? No, it's not. Because scientists have proved that a photonic belt can exist, and I've looked it up. A photon is an elementary particle that makes up light. To the extent that such a thing as a photon belt can physically exist, it is possible, but it might require the gra gravitational pull of a black hole, with light rays being bent around a black hole near the event horizon, forming a photon sphere. Or in this case, it is the energy from Alcyon. So right now we have more light photonic activity on Earth than ever well, for 11,000 years since the last time we went through this belt. But what are these photons? How do they work? Let's look at a scientist who discovered the electron to delve a bit deeper. In 1932, Carl David Anderson discovered the anti-electron and called it a positron. In 1956, the anti-proton and the anti-neutron were discovered. When an antiparticle is formed, it comes into existence in the universe of ordinary particles and it is only a matter of time, a fraction of a second, before it meets and it collides with an electron. The charges cancel, the total mass of the pair is converted into energy in the forms of photons. This offers a new and unprecedented powerful source of energy. Now this energetic energy is around us at all times but have you noticed more than ever in modern times and certainly since 2012 that when you're walking around you touch someone you give them a little shock or they give you a little shock and static, static, static is around much more than it's ever been so this photonic energy is all around us but it also helps us birth into a new technological age where photonic energy, zero point energy, you know, all these start, things start to come into fruition. It's going to birth a whole energy technology because more of this energy is actually coming in. It's more present. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be birthing instruments where we will put it on the human being and we'll see their light energy. We'll actually see their Merkaba and the photons and it's coming. So let's look at the more esoteric metaphysical 5D explanation of all of this kind of thing going on. Now, there has been a vibrational uh, matrix, uh, prison-like um, force put around Earth, which has been there for a very, very long time, keeping the energies on planet Earth very dense and very, very low, so none of this plasmic or photonic or gamma ray light can actually get in. But at the same time, nothing can get out, and that has also been partly to do with why there have been soul recycling, in other words, when you die, um, uh, you just reincarnate, you just come straight back down to Earth, you can't actually get off the planet, or it's certainly much harder to. And also, you know, Gaia has been trying to get out the message that she needed help and that she wanted the Galactic Federation to get in and the souls to flood in, but she couldn't because there was a matrix actually put around her. So nothing's been able to get in or out. That means light. Now, it's the photon belt that we're going through that is making the Schumann resonance jump up and down and peak. And some of the sensitive people out there who are encoding first are the ones who are going to be going through a list of symptoms. I've written them down because my clients are telling me about them all the time and I feel them too sometimes. You're going to be experiencing new physical symptoms like headaches, heart palpitations, sometimes even heart, pulp, heart pulps, um, chronic fatigue dizziness, nausea, changing sleep patterns and ringing in the ears is just going to be going up through the roof, sometimes blurring of vision and even more. So it's going to realign your chakra systems. It's going to get you in touch more with your Merkaba. It's also going to help you re-encode your DNA and straighten out the strands. So while that junk DNA, which is supposedly 99% of your body, was just sat there doing nothing, more and more of that is going to be enacted as time goes on and you're going to be getting DNA upgrades. Gaia herself is also going to be updating all of the magnetic fields all over the planet and you can see the magnetic fields changing. Our weather patterns will start changing. The way birds um, and uh, fish start migrate, migrating in the skies, in the oceans, will start changing. You know, whales are getting lost because the magnetics of the Earth are changing. That's why they've been beaching themselves, but they will sort that out. They will realign. Your weather, weather systems are going to change. The way water is on Earth, where it rains, where it doesn't rain, where bodies of water sit will change as well. And you're also going to be getting more earthquakes 
and more volcanic eruptions as we're going in until the earth settles down so we're getting a big reshuffle and the best way to describe going on into the photon belt is a bit like this imagine sitting in a room and imagine that this our sun is like the photon rays coming from this um this belt and as the rays from the sun go into your bedroom or wherever it is you sit it basically amplifies the energy of the dust so the rays of the sun come into your bedroom and dust starts to flow all around the room so all of the the dust starts coming up to the surface and, and rising. Well, it's a bit like the dark. As more light comes in, the dark is unsettled and it starts rising and coming to the surface. So you'll see we're going to be going from lower vibrations into higher vibrations. We're going to be going from lower densities into higher densities, or as, as people would say, from 3D to 5D. But it's more much more complicated than that. And in a higher consciousness, you're going to be birthing and creating new ideas and new systems and new technologies. So it's going to rapidly start changing. And if you think we've had a massive jump in technological um, processing and advancement in the last hundred years, start looking at what's going to be happening now because it's going to be much, much, much faster. And for those of you interested, go and check out Vladimir Popanin and the experiment that he did where he proved that human DNA and photonic light basically reenact. And when he put um, DNA from a human into photons, it made the photons realign in a certain way from whereby which when the human DNA wasn't there, that didn't happen. So it's been proved that our DNA does, re does enact with this photonic light and it changes and encodes us. So it's all there, all the science. On an emotional state, your body's going to be start cleansing and purging and releasing blocks. Some people might even be having uh, memories of past lives. Everything's going to start coming to the surface. Everything that has been um, suppressed is going to be broken out of. You're going to start flying when you were walking. So it's a great time of change. Um, Thanks very much for watching this video. Um, check out the, 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 the videos at the end. I've been Alexander Quinn, Starseed Navigating the Light. Look after yourself. Eat clean, drink lots of water, stay grounded. I'm on Patreon if you need my services. I've got clients booked up at least for, I think, for the next couple of days. But get in touch if you want me to talk you through this stuff. Much love and stay grounded. You guys rock. Ciao.